All right. Well, good morning, everyone. It's another fantastic day here at Health Plan Markets. Thank you all for being here. It's 902 on January 29th, 2024. I very much appreciate everyone taking time this morning to join us on the call. Uh, as always, we are recording these calls for your convenience. So if you do find yourself in front of a client, remember that clients come first, customers come first, and us come last, right? But uh, these calls are being recorded, so just make sure that um, you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. And when we launch them and upload them, at least you know what's going on throughout the week, okay? Um, now, we've, we're starting to see more and more trainings happening as we continue our journey throughout OEP. And uh, now that both AEP and, and OE have ended, we want to stay busy, we want to stay sharp, and we want to prepare and continue to grow our books of business here. So with that, we need to know what we're doing. So let's go ahead and jump into the training calendar here. All right, as we normally do here, the um, the training for the week is loaded. Um, and Rosie, I did see that uh, you were requesting the calendar there. If you do need um, uh, access to this calendar, just please shoot us an email at support at askhpm.com and we'll we'll send you over the link on how to get get this calendar on your phone, laptop, or iPad. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. So later this week, we've got um, later today, we've got Devoted. They're doing grassroots marketing. Now, no matter where you are in your journey as an agent, you always have to understand how to do grassroots marketing. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. And we also have a special guest from uh, one of our very close partners at Centerwell, who's going to be talking about some of the things that they do for grassroots marketing. Now, I've been doing this business for almost 20 years now. It scares me to even say that out loud. But throughout my journey, uh, grassroots marketing has played a phenomenal role in my success. Uh, whether or not you do it, you need to understand it. And um, there's no better place to learn that from, from the experts at grassroots marketing. And I think Devoted is doing a phenomenal job at grassroots marketing, especially on the support on what you can get from that partnership with Devoted, okay? Now, uh, if you're not currently contracted with Devoted, shame, shame, they're a five-star plan. Uh, at least they are in Florida and in, in Ohio, and they are just blowing it out of the water. So uh, if, you don't have yet, if you don't have the contract yet, please reach out to our contracting team or shoot us an email at support at askhpm.com and we'll get you contracted. Uh, but you're more than welcome to join the marketing. That's, that's today at 3 o'clock. They're doing a, a session there. You can register for that. They're also doing another session tomorrow, the 30th at 9, 9 a.m. So you got two opportunities to join that training. Also tomorrow, the 30th is United Healthcare's new agent workshop. So if you're new to United Healthcare, or if you know somebody that's new to United Healthcare, a new agent in general, this would be a fantastic um, journey for them uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, also, United Healthcare tomorrow at one o'clock is covering the low income subsidy and extra help programs. I cannot stress enough how important it is to understand this program as well, because not only can you uh, start understanding by listening to your prospects uh, for an SEP, right? You can start understanding what they're looking for. You can start helping people in the community, you could start helping your own book of business, which generate referrals, okay? If your strategy for referrals is I hope they call me, well, that's not a strategy. Hope is not a strategy. You've got to put something together. So just a quick tip here. Why don't you call all your book of business and tell them about these programs? It may not impact them directly, but it may impact their neighbor or their family member, and now you've got a lead, right? So understanding how these programs work is important. That's tomorrow at one o'clock. The 31st, we, we've got our very own Al Clancy doing a virtual coffee and chat session. And uh, he is here to answer all of your questions, concerns. If you have anything that you need help with, um, that is going to be available at, uh, Al is going to be available at 930 on Wednesday. And pay attention, people, because we're going to start doing some raffles for those people that join us on the Ask Al sessions. Okay, it doesn't have you don't have to come with a full agenda. Al always has something out, 
So, but we are going to be raffling off some cool stuff, but only for those people that show up and talk to Al. Okay. So 930 on Wednesdays that remember, he's like your coach. He's, he's like your guru. He's there to help you in your journey, especially if you, if you're new to HPM or new to the business, uh, he can help you with that. Uh, Wednesday, the 31st, we've got Cigna doing their virtual office chat there too for Medicare. If you have any questions or anything that you might need for Cigna, they're available. And then devoted doing a third class for that uh, grassroots marketing at noon on Wednesdays. We've got three opportunities this week to cover the grassroots marketing. United Healthcare is doing DSNP opportunities. Again, that goes hand in hand with that extra help and low income subsidy programs as well. DSNP opportunity is huge. That's at one o'clock on the 31st. And that's the end of January. Can you believe it? We're here already. Um, if you do have any leads, remember, this is the week to button up anyone that's outstanding, anyone that you've been talking to, make sure that you get them buttoned up this week. And so, because the first is on Thursday, February is already here. Um, and then Friday, of course, we've got our What About HPM shop with our very own Tom Ryan. Uh, again, if you're unfamiliar with our quote and enroll tool for Medicare, please check that out. That's nine o'clock every Friday. And again, we're doing raffles for those people that are showing up to these trainings for either Al or Tom. And uh, we want to we want to see some winners out there getting some free free swag, free stuff just for showing up. We appreciate that. So that's the training for the week. Remember, guys, keep one foot in the classroom and the other one in the field at all times. Just the name of the game. All right, here, let me take a look at next up. We've got um, jumping over to ACA for a minute. Yes, ACA ended on um, January 15th. Uh, we do have several opportunities to continue to grow your book of business throughout lock-in for ACA business. Uh, but one of the biggest updates came on January 11th, and I haven't had a chance to, to talk about this much, but one of the big changes moving into 2024 for ACA is you now need digital consent to talk to your members or prospects or even your clients um, about their plan or about their benefits. Okay, so CMS now requires that you have written or verbal consent from your client or prospects before completing an application. Okay, now. Previously, many of you were doing this manually. You were maybe doing paper consent forms, which we sent out last year, or maybe you figured out a system like we use Adobe Sign or Adobe whatever to send out for signatures. Uh, if you're using Help Sherpa, you no longer need to do that. So this is another built-in feature. We knew this was coming, uh, but you have three options when you're walking down the pipeline for your member. Um, the first one is you can now email the digital consent form right to your client, which is, you know, a saving grace. That right there is amazing. But if you have a paper one, maybe they were face to face in your office, um, you can download the consent form from Health Sherpa, uh, which is located in that walkthrough, and then you can upload it manually into Health Sherpa. Or if you have another way of tracking it, like. Um, DocuSign or Adobe Sign or HelloSign or whatever you're using for documentation for the consent form, just you can click that and that way you can continue. But what's great is they created this safeguard to ensure that you're compliant and making sure that you have consent with your members, clients, and prospects um, that you are able to talk to them about their health insurance. Okay, so just make sure that you're following the bouncing ball with that. Uh, again, you can now email the digital consent form directly from Health Sherpa. Huge saving grace. Just want to make sure that everybody's aware of that. Okay. Um, speaking of OEP, I know I'm jumping around here a little bit, but I do want to share an email that I thought was extremely helpful uh, that was sent out from Randy Beck from Cigna. And uh, if you're not on his email list, don't panic. Uh, this was basically sent out from most of the sales broker managers at Cigna, but um, but we also got this from Cigna corporate as well. But Remember, we've got a few rules during OEP, which remember is from January 1st to March 31st. And I'm getting questions about, you know, what can I do? What can I not do? Uh, can I do this? Can I do that? And so I wanted to touch this, uh, touch on this just a little bit this morning about OEP. And so the first thing, what can you do? 
during OEP from January 1st to March 31st, what can you do with your marketing uh, right now? You could definitely target and market to agents, people that are turning 65. You can market to DSNPs and LIS um, beneficiaries, which we just talked about this morning. Remember, they can change once per quarter uh, for the first three quarters. Okay. Uh, you can send marketing materials when a customer requests them. You can conduct one-on-one -on -one meetings with customer requests. So if somebody calls you, of course. And then you can provide information about OEP through the call center if a customer asks. Now, the call center thing is whatever, right? But if somebody calls you and says, hey, look, I'm really not happy with my plan. What options do I have here? Then you could definitely let them know about OEP. But we can't market to the degree of saying, hey, are you unhappy with your plan? You can make one more change. So that's what they're saying. You can't do that. Um, some other things you cannot do during OEP. You can't send unsolicited uh, materials, advertising, or referencing OEP, which is what we were just talking about. You cannot purchase mailing lists or other identifying information to specifically target customers during OEP. You cannot engage in or promote activities intended to target OEP as an opportunity to make further sales. And you cannot call or otherwise contact customers who selected a new plan during AEP. So if you know that they made a change in AEP, you can't target them for OEP. So these are the rules of the road. I just want to make sure that that was clear. Again, this comes from Cigna. If you have any questions about it, go ask Al on Wednesdays at 930. So there you go. He can dive in a little bit deeper with you on that. Okay. Um, now, Knowing that there's some restrictions on marketing, I do want to remind you guys about our marketing catalog, which has some fantastic resources that are available to you. And as a reminder, you can go over to our HPM Gold Key, and it has everything that you might need in order to get your marketing going, okay? So um, in the chat here, I'm gonna post the link to the Gold Key there and you are ready to rock there. So under the gold key, you go under marketing and you can see the new HPM marketing catalog there. And when you open that up, you will have beautiful assets available to you. Um, everything from social media ads to event flyers, right? This is one thing that we were talking about. To um, flyers for the doctors, digital ads, I know a lot of you are asking for some custom pieces. We've gotten some letters here, um, all of which um, I have to say, Casey has done a fantastic job creating. So before you try to create something yourself, we might already have a template for it. And we can get it done for you, okay? Um, one of the things I wanted to mention as far as uh, an opportunity here is Medicare 101's Medicare educational seminars I'm hearing from agents are being massively successful right now. So if you uh, have at least two years of experience and you are looking to grow your book of business, uh, one of the best things that you can do is get exposure out in the community by doing these educational seminars and uh, helping seniors understand their Medicare options. Okay. So we have the, um, the presentation in both English and Spanish. We can We've got T65 letters. We've got all sorts of stuff. We've got postcards, um, all of which we can help you with, uh, at least for the design work and get those things going. Up at the top uh, are instructional videos on how you can order these items and make them ready to go for any of your events that you've got going on. Okay, so this is really key and uh, important in everything that you do for marketing. Um, I can't stress enough. Uh, you know, how important it is to continue to grow your book of business out there in the community with grassroots marketing. And this is one of the things that you can do there. So with that, I am going to invite uh, Mr. Brian Clemens from Centerwell. Do we have Brian on the line? Hey, Justin, how are you? I'm awesome. How are you doing, Brian? Doing well. Thank you, guys. Uh, I would just want to thank you, thank Nick, uh, Victor, Lena, Sergio, your team for the invite this morning. We appreciate it very much. Absolutely. And uh, I've known Brian for quite some time. Um, he's he's in a relatively new role at, at Centerwell. So congrats on the job. And uh, we're really excited to, excited to have you on this side of the fence. So uh, with that, take it away, my friend. 
Okay, well, first of all, uh, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday morning to you. Um, it's almost February here. And, and again, thanks to the team for allowing me to participate. Uh, I don't want to eat up too much of your time. I had about five different talking points that I'd like to just review. I'm not a big slide guy. I can put a couple up, um, but I prefer to just engage you guys and tell you a little bit about what, where I think we are able to assist you. And Justin, I think last time you did your um, when we participated, when you're doing your awards down on International Drive, you addressed this with the team, but I'm going to do it again. Um, and what I want to talk about is engaging our community engagement professionals. Um, they can be such an asset to you guys, whether you have a marketing site, whether you have an access site, wh whatever your situation is, the our community engagement professionals are able to kind of uh, reach out to patients in a way um, that you guys can't. They, uh, they can ask very specific questions. Um, they can uh, assist you during events. Um, they just are wet. They're an asset that I think you guys should all consider um, kind of um, making use of. Uh, we've just here recently been able to uh, pair up somebody with Ed Viguez, with Rose Kofi. Uh, Angela Cano has been using our folks for quite some time. And let me tell you the synergy that, that gets created between you guys looking for sales, because we understand that's how you get paid, and us mm -hmm. looking for new membership that's engaged. That That's probably the key I want to emphasize here, Justin, is engaged. Mm -hmm. We need people that are actually going to show up for their appointments, take their medications, because um, it, it's not always a, a, just getting a sale or getting somebody in isn't necessarily what we're looking for. We want somebody who's going to come in, meet the doctor, uh, accept the recommendations, take their medications. Uh, they don't have to come in all the time, but they have to come in and establish a baseline. And I think everybody on the call understands that the reason for that is we have heatish measures that we have to meet. We have MRA coding that has to be done correctly. So a member, just a sale, isn't necessarily necessarily a sale um, until they actually come in and establish. And on the back side of that, we are all tied in with Salesforce. So you guys know we want to protect your book. So if you're working with a community engagement professional, they enter in Salesforce that that is your client. Um, you're responsible for the sale. Uh, we hope that you help us with engagement, but also on the back end, should they have a problem with their plan, not know how to exercise their plan, um, maybe need to even need a, like a provider switch or something like that, we're not going to reach out to an exterior a broker is going to go right back to the agent of record so that you, um, from a customer service standpoint, retain that client on the because we do understand building your book and keeping your book uh, kind of consistent is how you are basically establishing your career and making money for you and your family. So I wanted to make sure we emphasize that for sure. Um, the ACC program, Justin, you guys are participants in the ACC, correct? Yep. So the uh, scheduling fee or placement fee, depending on how you want to uh, you know, call it whatever it is, that is something uh, that we go ahead and, and pay out to uh, the agents um, that are participating in the program. Uh, and that is done through if all the steps in the process are executed. So if, say, you're working with one of our community engagement professionals and you get a member and you place the member in our clinic, um, the scheduling has to be done in order to qualify for that program. Um, the schedule has to be made, and that's a deal, a contract that we set up with CMS. So there, there no payment can be executed. I um, mean, I know several payers are, or several providers are doing this currently, cannot be executed until um, the, the appointment has been scheduled, and the schedule has to be done by the broker. It cannot be done by our CEP because that pulls somebody out of the program. It's got to be executed by the broker. So I wanted to make sure that I got that message across. Um, the other thing that we're actively doing, Justin, is, it, uh, again, if somebody has an access site, somebody has a marketing site, and they'd like a partner in that, um, I will go ahead in the chat. I'll leave my contact information. Um, we are actively trying to get involved in access sites and marketing sites. So if you guys have something you're uh, in the middle of doing, and for those in Tampa, by the way, or in other markets, maybe up in Jacksonville or even over on the East Coast, um, we can do that through Conviva as well. And I'll give those contacts. So Justin, if you have somebody reach out to you or Sergio, if you have somebody who reaches out to you, that's in one of those other markets, I'll get the associate director 
contact information to you guys so you can cascade that down. Okay. Cool. Okay. So <clears throat> long story short, if you have any of those scenarios and you'd like Centerwell to kind of be a, a partner in some of those, we're always looking for those opportunities in the community. Um, and I believe, believe it or not, uh, I think I did a lot of rambling very quickly. That's all five of my points. I wanted to make sure that we emphasize those and then see if anybody had any specific questions for me. And again, Justin, your team, thank you so much just for the opportunity to speak on behalf of Center Wall and to be a part of your meeting. I, I really, really appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, I'm not going to let you off that easy. So, so hang, hang tight there, buddy. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, so we did have a question. Um, is are, are other areas um, such as Tampa Bay set up with the ACC program? Is that not a na nationwide program now? Yes, it, it is a nationwide program. And um, you, because they're under HPM, which you have the national contract, Justin, um, they are allowed mm -hmm. to participate. Um, so absolutely. And uh, Keith Mazza is the person that has my position over in the Tampa market. And um, I'd be happy to send that contact information either to you or Sergio, whichever, you know, whichever, whichever is easier. You guys just let me know. Yeah, absolutely. And I know Keith from his previous life. So Absolutely, I can I can hook anybody up with him. Um, so, a question for you: um, As we're talking about with this morning, we were talking about grassroots marketing, and I know you're in charge of your team going out there and creating, you know, new leads for for Centerwell specifically. But also, you're coming across people that don't have a Medicare Advantage plan, and um, and you guide your team on on the success of of creating leads and creating um interest out there for these guys that are on the call some of them may be doing some grassroots marketing some of them are new um but what would what what do you see out there that's working if i was an agent and i said brian i, I really want to juice my book of business here what, what would you say to me what would you say hey this is exactly what you need to be doing right now so the things that i've seen anecdotally that work you know here uh, with Centerwell and with the CEP is, is scheduling community-based activities. The problem with that, Justin, is I see a lot of uh, recycling of the same type of things. So mm -hmm. looking for new senior communities to kind of reach out to, schedule events. Our CEPs, that's a, what we do, um, is we're constantly looking for events in the community. So uh, I would say that's one way to build a book and also reach out to some of those traditional um, it's kind of funny. I'll do it because I think we did the presentation when I when we saw you guys. Um, the market penetration rate in Osceola County is 75 percent. So you're recycling right. the sea. You're churning the same people. So I like to fish in the ponds that haven't been overfished. So if mm -hmm. you look at um, Lake County, who has a market penetration rate below 50 percent and Seminole County, that has a market penetration rate below 50%. Even up in Volusia, where we have Conviva up there, but I, I'm always trying to, you know, cross pollinate a little bit. Um, the market penetration rate is low there too. So a lot of your traditional Medicare's are still reside in those counties. Um, so mm -hmm. if I was starting an agency, or if it was me who was starting as an independent agent, I would go into those areas where it isn't completely saturated, and you're churning the same people, um, and then I would do it the way that we're talking about doing community events, access sites. Um, I, I know a couple of people that actually, they may be with your organization that are opening access centers up in Leesburg. That's an under, mm -hmm. underserved community and the market isn't completely saturated up there. So I hope, hopefully that wasn't mindless rambling and I answered your question. Oh. No, absolutely. So, so to, to cap it off, new areas, you know, don't go where all the other agents are going and get out there in front of seniors that are underserved. Um, you know, I, I know we use the term community events very loosely and it's very, you know, broadly used out there. And I've seen some fun stuff happen out in the community. Um, most agents, they default on like health fairs or health related activities. But have you seen anything that you were like, wow, that's really creative. That's a great idea and it's bringing value in the community. Have you seen anything out there that, that maybe these agents should, should start thinking about? Um, truthfully, Justin, I, I think I've seen 
uh, from what I've seen as far as events go, I've seen some pretty creative stuff, but I don't know if it cr if it translates into lead conversion. Everything that mm -hmm. we look at is lead conversion. So you get a lead, great. Um, does it yeah. equate to a sale, right? So we've done some right. things like senior senior trivia nights, because um, again, things like bingos are overdone, dominoes are overdone. Um, so we've mm -hmm. done some senior uh, trivia nights, and that have, those have been fairly well attended. Um, and then. I mean, I know it's it's old hat, but I think the T65 events too, ch ch your Medicare 101s you were just talking about. Yeah, um, yeah. Those, yeah, those seem to be kind of on the uptick as far as uh, getting some attendance and people trying to navigate or understand their way through Medicare. So, um, and those, those kind of uh, the trivia nights and, and things like that, uh, and we've done some senior dances, but I think a lot of that, Again, it seems to me, Justin, and you can tell that they seem to be sort of rehashed. So I'm thinking if you look for new communities that haven't had those type of events before or communities, um, the, the villages is expanding um, exponentially. They're now going down towards Lake Panasafki. Another 60,000 residents are going in there. That's all seniors. So just again, going where, where there's growth, where there's opportunity rather than in Osceola, um, where it's completely saturated. Maybe you go out to St. Cloud. You know, you go where things aren't completely saturated and completely overdone. That'd be my two cents. Awesome, awesome. Um, and I know Centerwell is growing outside of Florida, and we have some folks that um, are, are working outside of Florida or maybe have leads outside of Florida. And I know it's not your department specifically, but do you know of new areas or pockets across the country that you know Centerwell is is you know either going into or they're having some success there? Absolutely. Um, our Vegas is our fastest growing market. So Nevada basically is our fastest mm -hmm. growing market. Uh, we're in Texas. Uh, we're in South Carolina. We're in Virginia. We're in Georgia. Uh, we just expanded up into Tennessee. So those markets are, are kind of wide open right now. And I'm sure there are more, Justin. I'm just doing this off of the top of my head. Um, but we continue to expand into kind of uh, the lower the lower half of this country. We're not we're not up into New York or Chicago or places like that yet, but kind of the southern yeah. regions uh, of the country, including going out west on the west coast. Um, that's where we're headed. Arizona is another one where we're going. So um, yeah, yeah. any any help that uh, if if you have agents that are conducting sales, again, I'll get them just like I told you. I get you Keith Maz's contact. I'll get you the mm -hmm. AD, my counterpart in that region, if they want want to make contact and see if they can expand their their. Um, networks in those areas yeah if you if you have a directory for for national as well you know whenever you get that that would be really helpful because i know we've seen agents doing enrollments and they they're not familiar with the doctors in those areas but if they know center wells there it's an easy you know point and shoot kind of situation so happy to help you know across all markets if necessary absolutely i'll get that to you cool cool thank you well um Thank you, Brian. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, your insight is, is very, very helpful um, because most of these guys are tired of me saying the same things that you're saying, but they're going to listen to you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so, no, I, I, I appreciate it. And, and, you know, Brian's been in the business for a while. He's seen a lot. And, um, you know, if you're looking to grow your book of business, Centerwell is a solid choice. Um, and, and just a quick plug too, Brian, I think I've shared this with you. Uh, I used to work for the company that became Centerwell many, many years ago, and that's how I got in the business. So um, it's a solid company. They're, they're, they really take care of the seniors, which is the most important part of the equation. Um, and the team for, for marketing is, is well-led, um, as you can see by Brian. So thanks again, buddy. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Justin. And I just thought of something I maybe should have remind the brokers about before I exit yeah. is that we we don't have a contract with um devoted and we don't in Central Florida and we don't have a contract with Ultimate. Unfortunately, I'd love to see those, but Devoted is not ready to be there with us. And uh, Ultimate, mm -hmm. we're in the process of trying to work that out. Okay. That, that's good. Thank you for that. Um and then pretty much everybody else you guys take, right? As far Correct. as care goes. Correct. Yeah, yep. we just got a contract with United. So thank you so much for the time and the partnership. You guys have been fantastic, you and your team. So um, good luck and happy uh, OEP. You got it. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right, everyone. That, that concludes our call for this morning. I very much appreciate everyone's time and attention. And as we normally do, this is the last week of the month. So go out there, 
button up all the leads that you've got, make sure that you get the, the next month starting strong, get organized, and go out and help some seniors get some health insurance. So thanks again, guys. We'll see you next week, same time, same station. Have a great day.